okay and we are live all right so good morning everybody good morning uh welcome to the show meet the press with love joy my name is love james and uh, i'm your host for this show uh today we are broadcasting live from great zimbabwe university school law, law school uh, i think it's popular known as hibiti temple law school uh where we are going to be talking about a number of issues that are affecting the society today uh we're talking about uh, people with disabilities but with particular attention to eco justice for persons with disabilities of late we've been receiving a lot of reports that um there is no eco justice when it comes to people or persons with disabilities they are not getting enough justice uh in the course so we're here just to talk about it uh but before we do that let's just get the bit of information on on COVID 19. uh we see the numbers they are sort of getting down but uh, people are trying to be relaxing and do and that's very dangerous but what we're encouraging right now is for you to keep on maintaining those social distances uh keep on doing what you have to do to survive and we also encourage you to get vaccinated i think the numbers now it's more than 200,000 people we have been vaccinated with the first dose of the vaccine of the covid 19 vaccination so we encourage you to keep on getting that because covid is real COVID is killing and you could be next. So play your part. So back to the issue of um, uh, disability rights when it comes to, um, uh, the, to when it comes to our cause. We have invited here uh, Talent Maposa, who is working with an organization called iCode. She's just going to be telling us about what they're doing uh, when it comes to the issue of disability rights and, and eco justice. Talent, welcome to the program. Um, thank you very much. So, um, as you have said, my name is Talent Mabosa. I'm the director at Institute for Community Development in Zimbabwe. So, you know, we have been engaging in quite a lot of work around disability rights. And um, maybe just a little bit background of who we are. Mm -hmm. So, the formation of ICODISM came up to realizing that, you know what, for years there's been a lot of programming development work, but we have not been able to get to our targets. Mm -hmm. So, it was actually formed after realizing that we need to go granular and offer target specific uh, interventions. When you start talking about women empowerment, when you talk about uh, promoting the rights of women, let us understand that women are not a homogeneous group, they come as a diverse group. So if we are able to put a solution that addresses the needs of a woman, for example, a woman with a disability, or a young woman who is, who is staying in rural communities or in farm communities, then we start talking about meaningful development. So basically that is why we formed. So for us, our work around um, access to justice, it came after when we're doing our needs assessment as an organization, that's when we realized that one of the big, especially around gender-based violence, that's when we realized that one of the biggest challenges, especially amongst women with um, mental impairment, has been failed at access justice. The um, challenge is ranging from one where you find that the, the people they don't understand the SRH themselves, the violations themselves, they're not even aware that a violation has happened. Especially most of the time they realize when she's already pregnant. And it's even difficult for her to prove most probably she has mental health conditions that are making people doubt a claim. Or where there's been uh, a woman is willing to, to report an, 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 a, a violation. Some of the challenges that there have been issues around the course not being accessible in terms of the infrastructure challenges around are getting the interpreters at the court. So what we're doing as an organization, we decided to use what we call a multi-stakeholder approach where we bring in on board all the different stakeholders, uh, where we have the judges themselves, we've got the people within the recruitment unit, we've got the communities themselves, we've got the social workers themselves. Because the concept is broad, where we realize that, you know what, when we talk of SRH, when we talk of GBV, and we talk of access to justice, all these stakeholders have a responsibility, one or the other. So that is basically what we've been doing, and that is what I actually got us to do here today. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about the program today mm -hmm. uh i understand you brought in law students mm -hmm. why them specifically we, we can't talk of access to justice without having lawyers in law so for us we feel like let's catch them young let's let's start having the conversation now so that they appreciate and understand disability rights when they see a woman in the courts whether she's coming in as, as a witness or she's coming in as a victim or a survivor they are able to address and deal with the cases from a human rights perspective so basically that's why we felt like we need to raise that awareness at that young age for the left of the way as they prepare to become lawyers legislators of tomorrow so that is why we started with that again uh, about the program today how many law students are here and so, from which institution so we've got 16 we've got we've got, we've got um 
we've got four students, and then we've got um, Midland Pets, and then we've got investors in Labo. So each university has got four students that are coming for the competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's in it for them? Wow, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I hope one of those things is, is a COVID-19 vaccination. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, it, like the, 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 it, it, some of the prizes even include um, literature around sublit rights, mm -hmm. which we thought like it's necessary to invest in the purpose of law for the winning um, universities and but even some some school fees for the best students, mm -hmm. for the best woman speaker. You know, they're quite a large and then it's of the trophies for the university, the medals and like it's quite a whole lot of package that we still for them. Because for us, we, we, the, one of the reasons why we felt like we really needed to, 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 to procure literature for the library of the Women University was from realization that, you know what, if we make the literature available, at least it will also encourage reading culture just to understand and appreciate the disability. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Talin Maposa, the director of Ipod Zimbabwe, who are the host of this. Uh, I, I believe it's the first of its kind in Zimbabwe. Yes. Yeah. It's the first of its kind. Uh, moot court for disability rights, and uh, we will be following proceedings as, 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 as time goes on. We will cross over into the courts and find out what the students are here to say when it comes to the issues of uh, disability rights. Talon, just uh, out of interest, have you been vaccinated for COVID 19? I'm thinking of getting vaccinated, uh -huh. but I haven't been vaccinated. Okay, yet. okay. <laughs> I hope the next time that we talk, you would uh, get, uh, you, you get your, 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 your job. Definitely. Okay, so see you inside. Okay, thank you. All right, also now. Um, talent, what you say here is that they need to promote disability rights. And one key point from, from, from what you're saying is that they need to be inclusive, right? So we can't talk about, about disability rights without including the persons with disabilities. So on the program again, we've invited one of the, um, I say, I would say an advocate for uh, disability rights. Uh, Yamu, please come and, 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 and join me here and let's see what you have to say. Please introduce yourself and where you're coming from. Um, hello. Um... All right. My name is Yemrai Ngoma. I am a social worker by profession, but I'm also a disability rights activist. Mm -hmm. I also work at ICOD Zimbabwe as a disability inclusion officer. Mm -hmm. All right. From you, uh, Talent was talking about the issue of inclusion, uh, the issue of access to justice. As PWD yourself, uh, do you think enough is being done when it comes to inclusion or maybe access to justice uh, for cases with disabilities? Well, as you've mentioned before, this is the first of its kind at the new court. Um, talking from a disability perspective, um, I've noticed that there is a lack of an appreciation on disability rights. If there is, there were any efforts that were done, I don't think there was enough. Uh, right now, I can refer to the 1992 disability act. Look at uh, look at the situations that we're facing now. We see that it's inconsistent. It's not adequate to cover them. And the, the, the laws were prepared way before uh, realizing that the situation for persons with disabilities uh, have worsened. Their vulnerabilities are worse than they were before. And um, we've also, we also have the UN Center PG. And we see that its provisions sometimes, um, when we look at it closely, the provisions um, don't harmonize with our laws in Zimbabwe. So therefore, we've seen that it needs to be domesticated. But efforts of domesticating it are taking really long. And um, if, you, if you researched enough, uh, we've had the National Stability Bill that was recently approved. And we also see there's some inconsistency in it. And then as for the justice system, I think it might be a lack of capacity or it might also be um, an issue of ignorance because persons with disabilities are never taken seriously. And what they face, or whatever injustices they face, they cannot afford legal representation. And we've also noticed that they also lack knowledge on how to then address situations where they find themselves uh, vulnerable, where they find themselves lacking uh, representation in, in, in courts and in, in the justice system. Yes, so we've seen that we need this. We need to sensitize, we need to sensitize stakeholders we also need to sensitize the justice system because they're not working for us they're ignoring us and we need to be visible with the invisible level. all right you talk about uh they not being enough being done for you uh for people with disabilities but are you doing enough yourself are you pushing enough that's why we're there that's why that's why i am there i'm a disability uh, uh, right do you think you're being heard 
I'm trying to be heard so that other people's voices are amplified because we've been silent for long enough and efforts that have been done before, you know, they were not loud enough and now we need to make enough noise for them to notice us and to appreciate that we are a group that needs also to be recognized in the society because we do contribute to the society in our own way. Yes. And today we've got uh, the moot court on this event, right? How much do you think this can help uh, you guys to, to put out your message out there? Especially looking at it from, from uh, an angle that these are still students and when they go out um, into the field, maybe they, they will be clean. Do you think uh, this can go a long way? Yes, uh, I believe it's going to go a long way because we've, we've invited people, the young generation that needs to realize that we've got persons in our community with disabilities who are differently able that need representation. And if they have an appreciation today, I'm sure uh, when they follow their career paths, they might specialize in disability issues. They might uh, implement policies that are already existing. They might also formulate other policies that are directed at persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's, it's going to go along. All right. Uh, I'm looking to, forward to talking to you after uh, the mood court so that at least I can hear what you have to say about the students when they have a clear understanding of uh, equal justice for people. I hope you'll be able to get that I was hoping to talk to one of the lecturers, but uh, he seems to be uh, busy doing something. But uh, just out of interest, again, like I'll tell you, have you been vaccinated for COVID 19? Well, not yet. Um, for me, I'm still deliberating about it because I haven't had enough information concerning persons with disabilities. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's how you can work for food or anything that affects the animal. So for me, I'm still waiting. Mm. I think that's a great uh, key uh, issue that you're talking about. We might as well hijack this and then uh, you know talk about it. Talking about uh, COVID-19 uh, and, and, and the vaccination and, and people with disabilities, do you think enough has been done to sensitize uh, PWD because we've got uh, a lot of jingles coming out, but there are a lot of people who can't read, who can't hear, who can't see. Uh, you know, what needs to be done from a PWD point of view? Inclusivity. We have to embrace inclusivity. We have to make efforts uh, to embrace inclusivity because when we're talking about uh, accessibility for persons with disability, we want them to also be aware to have access to information that is comprehensive. That is there for them to understand what it means. Because if you send in a jingle to a person with a hearing impairment, there is no one to translate that for them. Uh, on our TVs, I, I hardly notice any subtitles um, on the screen that tell people, you know, you have a, visual, you have a hearing impairment, you also need to follow what is happening uh, through the subtitle. I haven't seen any of that. And I've also noticed on our radio programs, you really don't have, um, you don't have those things in place. So we need those things in place. We need to be cohesive as a society, as a nation. We also need to just embrace that and have an understanding of what inclusivity means. Because it doesn't mean uh, just because um, it's a school, you have to have someone with a disability there, but then put them in a special class. That is not inclusivity. We want them to learn. That's actually discrimination. Yeah, that is discrimination. We want them to be mainstream. We want them to learn with other students at the same pace with other students. And then we would have the teachers coming in and then giving them the attention that they need for them to keep up with other students. All right. Thank you so much, Yemu. Uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to talking to you after the mood court, and then we can have uh, uh, another discussion uh, regarding what the students are doing. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good thank day. All right. Um, so, again, talking about inclusion, we can't talk about the students themselves without talking about, uh, without inviting uh, the lecturers uh, who are the ones who are nurturing these youngsters, these lawyers. We hope and trust that uh, they are doing enough. So we have also invited one of um, the lawyers at Great Zimbabwe University. Uh, so please come closer so that maybe uh, they can hear you. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, good morning, everyone. In short, because I know lawyers yeah. need to talk. Yeah, my, my name is Botswana Mafosa. I'm a lecturer at the Devil Law School in Great Zimbabwe University, located in Machine. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you are the host of the first of its kind, Moot Court on Disability Rights. How do you feel about it? Um, it's a great feeling, but we are delighted to be part of transformation, to be part of disability rights. We are advocates of inclusion, sustainable development, and an egalitarian Zimbabwean society. It is a piece to the constitution and international laws. As a law lecturer yourself, uh, you are responsible for the lawyers that are uh, in the courts. Uh, you are responsible for the judges that uh, you know go out there. 
uh, but every day we hear that there's lack of inclusion for people with disabilities. Uh, there a lot of issues that come out of the cause when it comes to justice on, for, for, for people with disabilities. Where are we getting it wrong? Uh, do you think you guys are doing enough? Are you ticking enough? Um, it's an undeniable scientific fact that we are amongst us vulnerable populations, particularly women, persons with disabilities, children, the elder, and the like. Mm -hmm. But as the law school, we teach a five-year LLB program, and in that program, we have modules uh, geared towards improving the plight of uh, disabled persons or people, people with disabilities. In other words, what I'm saying is, we have modules such as international human rights law, gender, HIV, and, and AIDS, uh, and constitutional law. In those modules, what we seek to achieve is to increase the capacity or the awareness of the rights of persons with disabilities, the rights of children, the rights of women. Uh, I cannot deny the fact that there, is, there appears to be a disjuncture between the legal education and the legal profession. But there are various reasons or varied reasons for that. And uh, we offer also, I mean, the work-related learning program where students spend six months in the public sector and six months in the private sector. What we hope to achieve through our attachment program is that students get to experience what it is to be in legal um, practice. But there are areas uh, of improvement, particularly we seek to have winter schools with i -Cord. We also hope to introduce an LLM program in disability rights to bridge that particular gap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, you've articulated everything that I wanted to ask, but uh, going back to, to working with uh, organizations like i -Cord and probably other community uh, um, organizations, how important are those uh, partnerships? In, in, in making sure that we have um, equal justice for disabilities and also maybe a clear court system, um, or, 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 or I, I don't know if it, it is the right wording, uh, court system or maybe justice system uh, that also advocates for the uh, rights of, of, of persons with disabilities. I think a, a multi-stakeholder approach is the way to go. Yeah, what we hope to achieve with high court is that we come in as law lecturers, as lawyers, to increase their capacity on disability rights, be it at the international level, at the regional level, or at the domestic level. And where they come in is that they work directly with the people on the ground, the community. So that promotes a bottom-up approach to inclusive development. Uh, in this particular instance, we're talking about women. So we'll be teaching stakeholders in the Ministry of Health in the Ministry of Public and Social Welfare about disability rights. And what we also hope to achieve is to improve legal reform or advocate for legal reform to say, how do you reform our institutions, mm -hmm. our legal frameworks, and how do we involve persons with disabilities so that their concerns are heard and also codified in the legal system itself. It's a long-term strategy. It won't uh, be achieved overnight, but we hope that these steps that we are taking will gradually um, lead to something meaningful or practical. All right. Coming back to the program of today, I know you have to go. Uh, but in brief, what are you aiming for, or what are your expectations from uh, this first of its kind moot court on uh, disability rights? Yeah, the idea is to get to, 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 to improve proficiency in disability rights, particularly on students. Mm -hmm. Once students come to grips with the general idea of disability rights, that would then cascade into other domains in the community. So the main objective is capacity building. The second one is advocacy. And the third one is to assist ICOD to reach out to the world out there, to Zimbabweans, and to also influence policy mm -hmm. through you know, legal education, in this instance, clinical legal education. Mm. Lastly, lastly, this is the last one. Have you been vaccinated for the COVID-19? Yes, I was vaccinated two weeks ago. And how do you feel? Because there, there are a lot of people who are saying a lot of things. Maybe from, from, from you, you can hear what you have to say. I, I exercised my constitutional right. Mm -hmm. I, I did it voluntarily and mm -hmm. I don't regret it. Mm -hmm. Did you yes. feel anything? No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And have a good day. Great. We hope to see you uh, on the inside. All right, so that was um, uh, Mr. Maposa, one of the uh, Nkosana, rather, well, one of the lecturers at uh, Grace Mabu University. Uh, he was just giving us a, a, just a brief about what they are doing as, as law lecturers. You know, uh, he, he's saying that there's a conjecture between uh, what they're teaching and, and, and the justice system out there. But uh, it's one thing that they're saying we need to correct. And they're saying that it's not a one-day event. It's not going to, to change overnight. 
and they're hoping that uh, through this first of its kind moot court on disability rights, they are going to touch a lot of um, um, uh, law school students so that at least when they leave school, when they go out into the field, they know what they have to do. They know uh, that they have to represent peasant disabilities. So, like I said, we'll be following proceedings uh, in the in the GZU law court, uh, moot court. We'll be giving you just snippets of, 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 of what will be happening so that at least you can get an understanding of what these students and uh, the lecturers and, and as well as the judges have to say. So they've uh, invited proper judges. Again, we'll be hearing more from, from, from that. But um, as we wrap up now, we continue to encourage you to take care of your loved ones during these COVID times, COVID-19 times. We know it's a difficult time and uh, most people have become reluctant, you know, they've relaxed about um, uh, COVID-19. Uh, some people are not even wearing masks, uh, social distance has become now a myth and all those things. They need to, um, to be followed because COVID-19 is still with us. We need to be very careful and if you can, if you can, please go and get vaccinated. Because, like the president once said, but jokingly, there will come a time when uh, those vaccines will be required, will be a requirement, and uh, you don't want to be left out. So in the meantime, whilst we wait for uh, the Mutko to start, I'll just uh, leave you to think about what you have to do, what you have to be, you have to be doing to protect yourselves and your loved ones right now. But um, I would just love to say, keep on tuned to 260 Chat. We'll be coming back with the moot court in about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we can get the proceedings uh, kick started. Take care, okay, loved ones. My name is Love Bintungis once again. The program is Meet the Press with Love Joy. It's bye for now.